This is the Booker Fitty, um, yep. which is obviously by Vinny. Uh, doesn't need an introduction. Um, we bought Booker at the chairman sale um, when she was um, sold after she finished training. We gave 1.8 million for her. Mm -hmm. Uh, this lady's full brother, he made 2.5 at the Gold Coast last year. Mm -hmm. It's called Railway Man. Mm -hmm. He's won two trials. Uh, he's with Kieran Maher. He's a nice horse, thinks a lot of him. Sent the mare back to Vinnie on the strength of the first foal. And we got this lady. And she is an absolute queen. Yep. She's just everything you look for. Um, good size, loads of quality, good shape. So walk her go, please. On type, she's just a, yeah. like a really good mover. Looks like Coaches, a really powerful early. shoulder. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got a big engine inside of it. And then, obviously, her mum was as fast as anything, and this lady can be a fraction of that. She'll be after a good start. Yeah. She'll go very close to, to being up there, one of the top fitties of the week, I'd say. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. People start drooling when they see her. Yeah. A Bay Philly, lot 443. I am invincible, out of Booker. So a speed machine out of an Oakley plate winner. It makes perfect sense. What for her? Who'll start her away? Well, she's a seven figure filly for mine, I'd have thought. Who'll give me 500 and go, surely? 500 and go. Five, thank you, Ziva. 600 better, 600 better. 600 down, dollar an hour, gonna be 600 down, dollar an hour, gonna be 600 down, dollar an hour, gonna be 600 bit. 800 there, 800 down to 1 million in front. 1 million dollar an hour, gonna be 1 million dollar an hour, gonna be 1.2 there, gonna be 1.2. You wanna be three, come on. 1.2 where? 1.2 million, 1.4. 1.4 million dollar an hour, gonna be 1.4 million dollar an hour, gonna be 1.4, 1.6, 1.6 better. 1.6 million dollar an hour, gonna be 1.6 now, gonna be 1.6. Make you wait, what do you say? 1.6. 2 million, like the way you play. 2.2, 2.2 they said, 2.4, 2.4 million, 2.4 bid, 2.4 million dollar an hour, gotta be 2.4 million dollar an hour, gotta be 2.4, wanna be 6, come on, 2.6, 2.6 million dollar an hour, gotta be 2.6, now gotta be 2.6, right hand side, 2.6 bid, 3, thank you sir, on the phone, 3 million bid, 3 million dollar an hour, gotta be 3 million dollar bid, then what do you say, at 3 million, how are we going Jimmy and Jess, at 3 million, how is the phone, I sell inside, I'll take you one, at three million, you're sure you won't for 100,000 more? I sell inside. He shakes his head. I sell. Anyone else like to come in? I sell inside. I sell her out. I cash her for three million. Resolute Racing, thank you very much. What are your plans for this evening after the race is wrap here, up here at Keeneland? Well, we're having a big party back at my place, so if anybody wants to come by, just text me. And uh, we're going to have a watch party as, as we uh, buy uh, Winks tonight, the Winks Philly. 100% buying the Winks Philly. I've got uh, two um, of the uh, syndicates that have reached out. They want to partner with me on it. And we just want to keep the horse in Australia, just like I want to keep the good bloodlines here. Uh, you know, Winks is a phenomenal uh, creature and has done great things. I think for that horse to leave Australia is just terrible. And, you know, you know the international bidders are going to be going after her because of the bloodline. And so my, my plan is to buy it and, uh, and to keep it there in Australia, race it, and then breed her. And if we get some good progeny out of her, maybe bring one of those back. But I just think it would be totally wrong to take that horse you know, outside of Australia. And so, you know, eventually I want to have a, a, a big presence there as well. And so this is kind of my way of introducing myself to the Australian people. So you're sticking to your mantra. You're not bidding, you're buying tonight. I'm buying the horse, yeah. Good luck in this race, good luck tonight. Yeah, thank you. Healing sales have always intrigued me. So much money flying around, so much theatre. All in the pursuit of finding that winning feeling, the horse that is faster than the rest. And beyond that, finding a fast one that can then become a stallion and deliver the mother load payday and change your life. Players in the yearling marketplace are notoriously private, but we've gained access to some of the biggest players in the game via the Ladbrokes Racing Club. Over the next two days, we will bring you the best insight possible and make you feel like you're on the inside of one of the most exclusive and indulgent marketplaces in the world. Where does Dan Cobby and the Ladbrokes Racing Club fit in in the rankings of the major players? <laughs> I don't know if it'll be major, but um, we would like to be active. Yeah. Um, we've certainly got a budget put aside to, to be active. And to be active at the sale, you need to, yeah, you need to have a fairly significant budget. It's the, it's the best sale, mm. it's the best of the best. As then you're versing each players from right around the globe. So for us to be active here, we, we do need to have that budget set aside. And, and I feel that we, we've got enough there to, to be fairly confident leading into a week like this. Um, we're racing our horses in partnership with Newgate. Mm. Um, and Henry and his team are out you know, looking at horses right now and, and I guess getting that list you know, down to a short list and, and from there we'll, we'll sort of zone in on the ones we want to buy but um, it's great to be 
I guess, have the backing of Henry Field and Newgate leading into a week like this. Just having their experience and um, their knowledge, it's just, it's incredible. Um, him, Gavin Murphy from SF Bloodstock, it's a, it's a great team to, to be a part of. And as I said, it just makes these these types of weeks a little bit easier because you're just going in with that little bit more confidence, mm-hmm. knowing that you're, you're surrounded by people you trust and, and you can work well with. And, and we've certainly found that with Newgate and, and that team. So Colt Syndicate, it can get pretty exciting in the sales ring when a Colt Syndicate spitting on a particular horse can get even more exciting um, when a couple of Colt Syndicates are going head to head with each other and, and trying to get a yearling. Can you tell us a bit about what the Colt Syndicate is? Yeah, the Colt Syndicate is basically a group of people that get together and try and buy future stallions. Mm-hmm. So yearlings now, yearling Colts, generally very well bred, well conformed Colts that have the potential to, to make to make stallion prospects in the future. And the idea is rather than paying an eight figure sum for those Colts after they've won a group one race to pick them out before. And it's interesting because it's, it, we've been doing it for maybe seven, eight years now. I've had a lot, of, a lot of success doing it. I think we've been involved with 15 individual Colts that have become stallions uh-huh. uh, in one capacity or another um, since we started it. Uh, however, it's getting much more competitive now. There's a lot of people mm. doing it. So the, the arbitrage isn't quite as good as it used to be, but, but it's certainly something which we've had a lot of success at and we enjoy doing. And do you know how many recognised cult syndicates there are at the sales at the moment? There's all, you know, every year there's new ones pop up and new ones disappear. Yeah. And so there's probably six or seven, maybe, you know, yeah. maybe eight, maybe more. Um, there's, always, there's always a new one forming and a, you know, one dropping out, but, but uh, there's probably, yeah, maybe half a dozen. And how many Colts would you like to come away with for the Newgate Colts Syndicate this sale? Oh, if we could buy, you know, five or six, that'd be great. That'd yeah. be great, you know. And uh, if we get out with five or six Colts, that'd be that'd be good. I think it's going to be a very strong market for those Colts. So, yeah. so yeah. But you know what? We'll just play it as we see it. And yeah. if there's decent buying, we'll buy more. If the buying's not so good, we'll buy less. And you're a vendor and a buyer. How do you feel about the temperature of the sale? Do you feel like it's... I think it's going to be very, very strong. There's plenty of money here. I reckon mm. like our inspections are down from previous years. However, I think the people that are here to spend, uh, are, are, are the guns are loaded. You know, the, there's a lot of wealth out there, and and, yeah. and this is an industry that you know has, you know, a lot of wealthy players playing in it. And uh, you know, I think the top end, I think the, uh, you know, the high the high end prestige stock will be very much, very much in demand. All right, Mr. Cobby, we've got the Zoo Star Solar Charge Colt about to go through the, the ring. Zoo Star was on fire yesterday. Expecting more of the same? Yeah, definitely, especially out of this mare. Solar Charge, obviously, a very good producer. Um, yeah, this, this horse is a full to, full to sunlight. It was a terrific uh, terrific race there, and you know, who knows what she's going to do, um, I guess, as a broodmare as well. But um, progeny out of this mare have sold up to $3 million. Yeah. Uh, another one out of uh, out of the mare as well for 2.6. So um, there's a couple of runs on the board, so to speak, already. Beautiful Colt. Um, been well prepared. Pleasure to offer you this colt, ladies and gentlemen. He's got a big future on the racetrack. Make sure you put him in your colours, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the full brother to Sunlight. Start me. Who's got 500 to start him? Five, 200, thank you. Where's that? 600,000, Kate. 600,000 with Kate in front. At 700,000, at 750, at 750 now. 800,000, $800,000 there, but 800,000 now. You can picture him in a slipper field, a blue diamond field. 800,000. Against you online, any more around the ring. 850. At 850,000, uh, I sell. Done. 850,000. China Horse Club and the Syndicate. Newgate. Thank you very much. Now, obviously, that horse has been bought by Henry Field of the, uh, and his Colt Syndicate. Um, he buys you know, quality Colts with, with good pedigrees, and I guess that gives you the best chance of you know, landing that 30, 40, 50 million dollar horse. Mr. Beer, how are you, mate? Man, I'm great. I'm what we're called doing, uh, what we call in this industry ambulance chasing. So, <laughs> all the passed in lots just come past here, and then people like me on our budget just like follow them back and see if we can't strike a deal. It's a real like Lionel Hutz of, of buying horse races. We're just horses. We're just uh, seeing what other people don't want and seeing if we can uh, do something. Uh, so this week we got obviously a pretty hectic week. Um, got to look through basically every single horse in the catalogue. Um, Guy Molcasto does all of our selections. So he'll go through um, them all and obviously then Chris and I will follow up and go through and do second looks and then we'll whittle them down to have a short list and then um, 
basically we'll send send off that short list we will get them then vetted the, the vets will do the physicals first and then scopes x-rays and hearts and eyes and so we're doing a pretty thorough check and then of course the, the most important thing is it's all well and good putting your hand up in the air and buying a horse you've got to find the punters to actually buy the horse off you so, yeah because um, you guys are trying to basically sell 100 percent of what you buy aren't you yeah correct yeah. so um you know you if you spend five million this week you've got to be prepared that you think you've got enough enough clients interested to to chip in and say oh well i'm interested in this one that one so a lot of work goes into you know making sure clients a are catered for if they're if they're in or out for the sale obviously things with the economy change all the time um Easter sales a little bit different because of the number, the volume of of horses being being more sort of boutiquey than um, say Magic's where you've obviously got a, a thousand horses. Um, you, you, it does it does mean you you have a better guide as to who's coming in, who's not. Um, there are obviously the sales average is higher, which means the affordability is is a little bit harder. But um, there's some obviously some cracking pedigrees out there and some fantastic physicals to match them so mm. busy week yeah. and um yeah and then and then it's donkster week so yeah it's <laughs> crazy just in case you hadn't yeah <laughs> hadn't had your fill do you have a particular number of yearlings you'd like to come away with from this sale um yeah we'd like to buy you know three four five depending on the prices mm -hmm. uh we've got a, a budget that we set on horses uh but um you know we've seen some beautiful yearlings here mm. at the sale and we're definitely going to go home with some of them and the overall mood of the sale do you feel like there's a lot of heavy hitters here and there's going to be some real fireworks in the sale ring it's hard to judge uh but there's um uh w the economy isn't you know really firing in new zealand yeah. and australia but the trainers want to train uh, the best horses, they've got to come here and buy them. Yeah. And we're in the same catalogue. Yeah. We want to train the best horses that are bred in New Zealand and Australia, so we've got to come here and buy them. And is that the main goal of the Ladbrokes Racing Club, to give people an experience that none of us would probably normally be able to get? And that's why you're trying to find, you know, hopefully find a champion, and then all of your customers can go and follow along for the ride and, and get really They can get all the comms, they can get the, the videos, they can enter the ballots together along with the race day experience. Um, the amount of people you bump into, they've, they've never actually owned a horse and now they want to own horses because they've had that experience where they've met Chris Waller or Henry Field and yeah. James McDonald, etc. We're, we're opening that door for, for the customers that wouldn't normally get that experience. You've been commissioned by the Ladbrokes Racing Club to buy a filly with them in partnership for their members to race. I was just wondering, can you talk to me a bit about the process you go through um, over these sort of four or five days preceding the sale on Sunday and Monday? Yeah, for sure. So the last month, uh, every night uh, after I watch the news, mm -hmm. I spend a couple of hours going through each pedigree mm -hmm. and uh, analysing the pedigrees, saying, will the stallion uh, mate well with this mare? Uh, what's the second dam like? Is it a slow maturing family or is it a family that you could see uh, win a two, two year old race? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to buy horses that will win a two-year-old race but have the scope and go on and compete in races like the Thousand Guineas, those sort of races, and then train on to be Oaks horses. And so the horse that you purchased with Ladbrokes Racing Club, will it more than likely go to New Zealand and race over there? Uh, no, it's going to race here from our Cranbourne stable. So you ended up buying a colt with David Ellis and Tiaka. What happened there? Yeah, so we came into the sale wanting to continue down the path of fillies. Um, but the budget we allocated to David and his team, we found that the, the Phillies market was very strong. So we did obviously do our work on, on the Colts as well. Mm -hmm. And we just felt that sort of halfway through yesterday, we, we might just uh, change tack a little bit and, and go towards the Colts. So um, yeah, we came away with a written tycoon Colt from Corrinbeen. Um, it was a belter. He looks yeah. like he'll get up and run a bit. Yeah. Um, and he's going to go to, to Cranbourne. So I'm excited for Tiakau because yeah. um, obviously yeah. you know, the, we can support Tiakau's Australian operation. Um, and yeah, the horse will go to, to Ben Gleeson and Mark Wall is obviously the trainer, but you know, we'll be in the care of Ben Gleeson. So yeah. uh, it's really One exciting. One of the best blokes in racing, Ben Gleeson. He Lovely is. fella, isn't he? Yeah, the yeah. vlog that you guys did was really good. Yeah. I, yeah, I really enjoyed that. He came up to me yesterday and was like, you know, mate, great to see you. It was yeah. very kind of you.
And so that brings us to the Ladbrokes Racing Club. So you've started a Philly syndicate with them. Are there any differences between a Colts syndicate and a Philly syndicate? Uh, no, conceptually it's very similar. We're just trying to buy, like our whole thing is we're trying to buy runners. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when we're buying Colts, even us, like, you know, it's, it's very seldom we pay seven figures for a Colt. We're, we're buying what might be seen as lower value animals. Occasionally we stretch, but, mm -hmm. but we're trying to buy, you know, they're still very expensive in re re relative terms or real terms, but but you know we're not we're not a group which you know very really, rarely really pays you know me and plus for a horse and that's we absolutely mm. love it mm. um we think it's very special uh and so we're trying to buy like you know value for money athletic running fillies we can keep making their own pedigree uh, and and can most importantly be good fillies on the racetrack uh which which you know can you know that's the objective of the racing club is to get runners get winners get yeah. black type horses stake sources and, you know, for us, from our point of view, you know, hopefully we can resell those fillies back in the market and a few years' time and stakes winning fillies, you know, they'll have a premium value. And it's a big commitment from you guys, isn't it? You put a lot of your own capital into it. Put a lot of capital. on the yeah. line and all that yeah. kind of stuff, so. Yeah, you know, the, you know we put a, lot, put a lot of money into it in partnership with Ladbroke. So, yeah, we're just, you know, we, um, you, know, we've had, you know, we've had a lot of success buying Colts and if we can have... A bit of the same success buying fillies. Well, I think we'll hopefully, you know, be able to, to make a goal of it. But you know, it's a difficult game buying and selling horses. Uh, it's not easy. So you've just got to be on your, you've got to be sharp on your A game and and uh, do your best to try and find, try and find runners, but try and find value as well. You know, yeah. people underestimate the importance of finding value. You know, it's all good and well, like everyone can pick out the obvious. You know, the money's made in finding value, finding quality and value. So, mate, uh, Ladbrokes Racing Club been very active. Were you more active yesterday than you thought you would be? Definitely. I think it's one of those sales you can pre-plan a bit, but um, as you would have seen yesterday, things uh, things change on the go, and um, yeah, obviously you, you have to prepare, which we, we did. Um, but you know, some things pop up, and um, yeah, depending on budget as well, you know, it's hard to hard to go in with too much of a. I guess a, an outlook on the sale until you really know how the market's reacting. Yeah. What's the most you paid? You paid seven hundred twenty-five thousand for a fun in Philly. Yeah. yeah we bought yeah. bought um we bought a fun Philly out of Gypsy Robin. Um, it's a half to Pavitra and Wild Ruler, so yeah. obviously very well related. By a first season stay in, but look, he was a Golden Slipper winner by not a single doubt. Uh, he's been very well supported uh, at Stud. I'd say he's going to make it and make yeah. it make it well. Um, yeah. He's, I think he'll do well, Farnham. Um, so the first season stallions, I think he's sort of one that Henry's happy to yep. throw some support behind, clearly. Um, so, um, yeah, it's really exciting. As I said, really well related. Um, we're hoping to race this horse with our partnership with Newgate, but also might be um, a couple of others that come in the horse as well, obviously with that spend. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's something that we probably would like to reduce slightly. So. And any, any idea who you might send the Farnham filly to in terms of trainer? No idea at the moment, mm -hmm. um, but like applications we'll be, being accepted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But look, we'll get put into a system with Matt Vella, who yeah. um, who does all our breaking in for our Newgate fillies, mm -hmm. and then a decision will be made after that. To second, giving chase now. Happy Clapper and Winks is rounding them up, coming right around the field. Kluger takes an inside run. She's gone for home already. Winks. She beats off Hartnell. Kluger going up the inside. Happy Clapper can't go on. Winks is two lengths clear. Kluger sticks on. Then came Hartnell, but she's well clear. Winks inside the final hundred meters. Today we farewell an Australian icon, the greatest of all time. Winks wins her third, Queen Elizabeth beats Kluger, Hartnell third, Happy Clapper fourth, then Shillelagh, Mask of Time, further back to He's Eminent, not a factor in the race, from Dan's Dan's Dance and Harlem finished tailed off. Well, there's the Queen herself. She's tired, um, <laughs> she's, been, she's been busy. Yeah, we're lucky to have her, it's a... Uh... The guys are blown away. We've been, been looking forward to this now for a long time. A lot of international interest. A uh, huge. We've had Peter from all over the world down to the farm. We've had guys from America, Japan. Interest from Europe, um, domestic interest. Every trainer is talking about her. It's uh, it's amazing, really. Um, so walk for us, Chloe, please. Why would someone come from overseas to want to buy her? What is the it about residual her? residual value. She's yeah. a filly. Um, she said one of the the best mares of a generation worldwide and it's an opportunity to get into that bloodline mm -hmm. 
So she like she'd have appeal in every jurisdiction in the world as a broodmare, mm -hmm. and that's not even you know that's down the line. As a race filly, she'll she'll have that as well. But mm -hmm. People are thinking long term uh, collector's item, and that's basically what sure. she is. Yeah. Somewhere out there, there'll be a guy that sold his company for a fortune, and he'll be reading about her in Vogue or something like that, and he'll be paying attention. And then I've got all the powerhouses of the game that are interested as well. So it's a, that's truly what she is—a collector's item. Do you think she'll probably go overseas? If you had to guess, uh, I wouldn't like. Like, it's been huge domestic interest, and I don't think I don't think anyone that's based here in in Australia wants to see her go. Yeah, it'll be it'll be strong competition, but I. I don't think she's definitely going to go overseas. I think I think I think there's a strong chance she'll stay here. Mm -hmm. I'd like to stay see her staying here. I think. Yeah. And do you think she's going to be up and about for a golden slipper, or take a bit more time? Um, I, I think she will take a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. Um, mum wasn't a golden slipper filly. Dad was, but um, I think she's she's the type of filly that will only continue to improve in six months' time. And I think you'll see her as a two-year-old, but I think you won't see the best of her until she's a little bit older. And the record's five million for a yearling in Australia. Do you think that might get pushed with her? Oh, we'd, we'd, we'd like to think that um, she'd be capable of, of going close. But yeah. You don't know until they get into the ring. That's the, yeah. that's the honest reality. She'll, be, um, she'll, definitely, she'll definitely raise a few eyebrows anyway. I know that much. Will you be nervous before she goes into the ring? Um, I like there's always a, you know, there's a, there's a sigh of relief when the thing is over. And there, mm -hmm. But like... I don't think there'll be any, you won't be nervous. As you can see, she's got a great t temperament. She'll, she'll take it in her stride. And once she gets to a good home and, and she, uh, she gets, gets there, it's, a, it's all that matters, really. Yeah. I don't think they'll be nervous. We'll be excited. The lads will be happy. They'll be sad to see her go, though. She's, yeah. like, she's, she's a morale booster in the firm. Everyone that has anything to do with her loves her. We're delighted Mum's back there now and she's safely in foal. And it's, uh, we'll be on to the next one. Taking is the Winx part of your wish list as well. Have you had a look at her? Yeah, we've had a look at her. Uh, she's a, um, a nice filly, uh, but probably outside our budget. Yeah, and so the record for a yearling is five million with a half-brother to um, Black Caviar a few years back. Do you think that the Wings filly would be north or south of the five million mark? I'd say probably more. Wow, wow. Yeah. So let's talk about probably the Force them anything or sell for the most. The Winx filly. Yes. Have you obviously you would have looked at it? Yes. I'm sure you agree she's a beautiful type, yep. like everyone says. Yep. Do you think you guys would be active in her as well? It's not really our play. Uh, yeah. She's obviously a collector's item. Yeah. She's going to make, you know, a real premium price, and she should. She's out of a champion, and she's she's by a golden simple winner, and she's raised on a really good farm in Coolmore. So, you know, she's going to make a, a lot of money, but it's probably not. Uh, it's probably not sort of our play. We're probably more. Uh, she's probably, you know, she, she's she, she's a real collector's item, yeah. probably more so than people like us that are that are, you know, um, you know, I suppose buying horses a living, buying and turning them over and trading. We're probably more, uh, you know, have to have to value them in a more commercial manner. Mm -hmm. However, you know, for 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 a wealthy person, she'd be a very special filly to own. And do you think she'll go for more or less than the, the five million dollar record for Black Caviar's little brother? Oh, uh, I think. I think she can make more. I mean, it's anyone's yeah. guess, but you know, she's a very rare article, yeah. and uh, and she's nice. You yeah. know, she's she's very much in the mould of her mother. So you know, and you know, I think she's entitled to sell very, very well, and she should have international appeal as well. I mean, I think there's there's you know, by the sounds of it, there's been a lot of interest from Japan, America, and other places. So yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what she makes. She's a you know a very rare offering, and I really hope for the whole ownership group, all of which are. I know them well, and they're good people. I, I hope she sells incredibly well. She's, she's, uh, you know, it's hard to breed one like her, and I hope they do really well. Are you willing to say how much you think the Winx filly will go for? Oh, you just don't know because you, you, you. It's, it's. Um, she's such a rarity. Mm. She's almost like you. You're buying. You're you're buying a piece of history. You're buying. Mm. It's like buying a piece of art. Like, if you've got two or three who who really want it, well. Where do, where do you stop? Yeah. Because yeah. ultimately, the you know, she might be the one and only filly to be ever available. Well, if you spent X amount of million and you've been a breeder for 50 years and you go all, you know, yeah. sort of all chips in for this one, or mm. you might be, you know, someone who's just, just relatively new to the game thinking, well, this is just going to put my stud on the map. 
Mm. So there's there's numerous angles to work on. Yeah. Um, but like they they're all well aware that she's for sale. So yeah, she she'll make her money. That's for sure. But the reality is, I don't think we'll probably ever see a horse ever as good as Winx ever yeah. again. Um, but hey, if she can if she can be a thirty third as good and win just. Yeah. You know, a twenty fifth is good and win one of those group ones and everyone will be laughing. So um look just just buzz to be a part of it to be honest. Um and it'll be interesting to see see this place packed out on Monday. <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. Um, James I know. James just said more money for the Winx filly to buy her back. Oh look. She's gotta come home. No, She's gotta come an, home, James. There's an, Coolmore asking the owners if it's okay if Paddy leads this filly in. He worked with Winx, he folded this filly, and he brings her into the ring. Here is lot 391, the Bay filly, Piero, out of Winx. It was there the day the filly was born up there at Coolmore. Nice to have Paddy and nice to have the filly with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the filly by Piero from our idol in Winx. She's taking it all in, as rightly she should as her mother did on so many occasions. 25 Group 1 wins, 37 races. Ladies and gentlemen, we also would like to note the mare was four times, four times the horse of the year. Do I have an opening bid or offer? Is there three million a starter? Two million, thank you. I bid two million, I'll take 500 on her. I bid two million, 2.5, 2.5 million, three million, three million in front. I bid three million, you're out on the left. At three million dollars now, three point, Five million. Thank you very much. I've got five million. Five, five. Five point five million. Six million. I got six million with Liam. At six million dollars. At six million dollars. The daughter of our legendary Winx. At six million. At six million. Seven point five million I have. Seven point five million. At seven point five million. Eight million. Eight million here. I bid eight million. Eight million. I've got it down low at eight million dollars. $8 million, $8 million. What do you say, Harry? $9 million, $9 million, $9 million, $10 million, $10 million here. I'm at $10 million. I've got it with Liam Griffiths at $10 million, at $10 million. I'm at $10 million. I'll give your client a chance, Harry, at $10 million. It's worth a bit of consideration at $10 million, at $10 million. These opportunities do not come along very often. Once in a lifetime at $10 million at 10 million. I'll give you 500 to spend. How's that, Harry? At 10 million. At 10 million. At 10 million dollars. At 10 million dollars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the hammer comes up at 10 million dollars for the daughter of Winx. Is there any more, any further bid? Please, a requirement, just hold the applause. The young unbroken horses, $10 million. But I'm gonna sell them, make no mistake. At 10 million, take 500 more. At 10 million. Last chance, done. Godspeed, hold your applause please, hold your applause. We will follow her with great interest. Godspeed, young lady. She'll make her own story. Thank you, Patty. We'll get... Whopper Bloodstock, thank you very much, buys for $10 million. The filly stays in Australia. Thank you very much for the competition. Great to have you all here. Um, I think we have a little bit of an idea of the pressure that Chris was under with Winx. Um, <laughs> but fair play to Paddy Sheehan. Uh, he led her through all the staff on the farm and they've done a great job. And it's coming out in the Netflix series, um, what we went through with this mare. And like, she is lucky to be alive and probably to have a foal on the ground. Um, you know, it was 100 to 1. And we're here today and I couldn't be any more delighted that Debbie has bought this filly and the whole family you know they're such terrific clients of the farm 
uh, you know, they're just lovely people, they're great friends and yeah, to me this is like winning a group one. I, I can't explain Paddy Sheehan, uh, he'd be in tears now, like when uh, Winx lost the foal, like the mare nearly died yeah. and Paddy was there every night with that mare in the hospital so it was really fitting that Paddy led that horse through today and I'm delighted that the partners agreed to that, they were delighted that he did and Listen, it's a great credit to everybody at the farm. We're very proud of her and we would proudly let, allow her to go to someone else for them to have that wonderful journey we've had. And it just came a real realisation that no, I, I, we couldn't just be a part of it. Mm. We had to be with her. We had to make sure we looked after her. Who was the one that um, started that conversation? Oh, me. Was it you? Oh, God, yes. Came down from breakfast one morning. I've got an idea, guys. No, <laughs> no. At one of our weekly meetings, our, yeah. business, our, our staff meetings on a Wednesday morning, they all arrived and I said, well, we're buying them. <laughs> and what did they say? <laughs> Go for it, Mum. Good. 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 600 because to go it's in the Cox Plate. Rostropovic just in front of Dargento Ben Battle. Now Bowman gets moving on wings. She's only a length and a half to two lengths off the lead, followed by Savi Cope. Rostropovic just in front of Dargento, but here she comes. And the valley roars. Winks on the outside, moves up, takes the lead from Ben Battle. Then Rostropovic and Dargento into the straight at the 200 metres. It's Winks in front by a length. Ben Battle's going. With her. Weeks three quarters, Ben Battle. Weeks is staving off Ben Battle. Cometh the hour, cometh the legend. Greatness, Weeks has done it. It's Equo Utopia. Two leagues to Ben Battle. Humidor, then a gap to Avilius. Behind those horses, then Rostropovich.